Welcome to our world news program. Today, we've got some fascinating stories lined up for you. Let's dive right in. First up, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken took to the stage in Kiev, Ukraine, performing Neil Young's Keep on Rockin' in the Free World. This musical gesture was seen as a show of solidarity with Ukraine amidst its ongoing conflict with Russia. However, Blinken later acknowledged the significant challenges Ukraine faces, including a lack of foreign military aid, while Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to China highlighted the growing bond between the two nations. This shift has been causing ripples across the geopolitical landscape, especially among Western democracies. Next, U.S. Ambassador to Japan Rahm Emanuel made headlines with his visit to Yanaguni Island, a remote Japanese islet near Taiwan. This visit is perceived as a strong signal to China, showcasing the U.S. and Japan's readiness to address any potential contingencies in the region. The timing is particularly noteworthy as it comes ahead of Taiwan's president-elect Lai ching tees inauguration and amidst increasing Chinese maritime activities. The U.S. and Japan have been ramping up their defense capabilities, with the USS Ronald Reagan recently departing from Yokosuka. Lastly, let's talk about the future of space tourism. Chinese commercial space company CES Space has announced plans to launch space tourism flights by 2028. Backed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the company aims to take passengers to the edge of space, with each flight carrying seven passengers at a hefty price tag of $415,000 per ticket. This announcement comes hot on the heels of Jeff Bezos-backed Blue Origin's resumption of its new Shepard rocket flights, marking an exciting era for space enthusiasts. Please stay tuned for more details on these stories and much more. Don't go away. Washington Post, during a visit to Kiev, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken swapped his suit for a casual look and performed Neil Young's Keep on Rockin' in the Free World at a local bar, symbolizing U.S. solidarity with Ukraine. However, the reality on the ground was grim, with Ukraine facing a new Russian offensive in Kharkiv and delays in military aid from the U.S. due to congressional holdups. Blinken's visit highlighted the strained resources of Ukraine's military and the broader geopolitical struggle between the democratic West and autocratic powers like China and Russia. The meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing underscored their growing alliance, posing a challenge to the U.S.-led international order. As Europe grapples with rising illiberal forces and internal political shifts, the stability of the free world Blinken champion seems increasingly precarious. Nikkei Asia, U.S. Ambassador to Japan Rahm Emanuel visited Yanaguni Island, close to Taiwan, signaling U.S.-Japan readiness to address any Taiwan-related contingencies. Yanaguni, Japan's westernmost territory, is a strategic point emphasized in Japan's defense policy amid rising tensions in the Taiwan Strait. Emanuel's visit, marked by his arrival on a U.S. Marine Corps aircraft, symbolized the strong U.S.-Japan alliance. This visit coincided with increased maritime activity by China and the final departure of the USS Ronald Reagan from Yokosuka. The US and Japan are enhancing their defense cooperation, with recent upgrades to defense capabilities on Yanaguni and other southwestern islands. These moves come as part of broader efforts to maintain a free and open Indo-Pacific region, countering attempts by China to alter the regional status quo by force. Yahoo US Chinese commercial space company CAS Space announced plans to launch its space tourism vehicle by 2027, with commercial flights to the edge of space starting in 2028. This announcement follows Blue Origin's resumption of its new Shepard rocket flights. CAS Space's vehicle will feature a tourist cabin with panoramic windows and can carry seven passengers per trip. The company aims to conduct launches every 100 hours from a new aerospace theme park, with tickets priced between 2 million to 3 million yuan per person. Founded in 2018, CAS Space is backed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences and is part of China's rapidly advancing space exploration program. The recent launch of the Chang'e 6 mission attracted significant public interest, highlighting China's growing presence in space tourism and exploration. al -Hathera. In the midst of India's heated election campaign, a seemingly innocuous social media post by Pakistan's former information minister, Fawad Chaudhry, has ignited a storm, dragging Pakistan into the fray. On May 1, Chaudhry tweeted a video clip of Indian opposition leader Rahul Gandhi criticizing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharatiya Janta Party, BJP, captioning it, Rahul on fire. The tweet went viral, amassing over 1.8 million views and drawing sharp responses from BJP officials, including Amit Malviya, who accused Chaudhry of promoting Gandhi and questioned if Congress was planning to contest elections in Pakistan. Modi himself referenced the tweet during an election rally claiming Pakistani leaders were rooting for Congress, thus exposing an alleged Pakistan-Congress partnership. 
This rhetoric has intensified, with Modi and senior BJP leaders using Pakistan as a political tool to attack the opposition and bolster their image of strong national defense. The Pakistani government has condemned these comments, accusing Indian leaders of exploiting hypernationalism for electoral gains. Historically, Pakistan has often been a focal point in Indian elections, particularly during times of heightened tensions, such as the 2019 skirmishes following the Pulwama attack. Analysts suggest that while Modi's focus on Pakistan is a diversion from other pressing issues like the China border conflict, it also reflects a broader shift in India's political landscape towards a more Hindu majoritarian state. Reuters Breaking Views. Super High International, a Singapore based hotpot chain spun out of China's Haidileo International, is preparing for a $53 million initial public offering, IPO, in the United States, distancing itself from its Chinese roots amidst growing scrutiny of Chinese companies abroad. Although still controlled by Haidileo's founders, Super High has strategically positioned itself as a non Chinese entity, incorporating in the Cayman Islands and headquartered in Singapore, with minimal operational ties to China. This move aligns with a broader trend where companies like ByteDance and Shine face increasing regulatory challenges and suspicion in Western markets. Despite its efforts to appear independent, Super High remains financially tethered to Haidileo through brand licenses and supply agreements, which might hinder its standalone appeal. The company's financial outlook also appears less robust compared to its former parent, with slower projected sales growth and lower profit margins. This raises concerns about whether shedding its Chinese identity might backfire leaving Super High struggling to distinguish itself in a competitive market. Nikkei Asia China's industrial production outperformed expectations in April, growing by 6.7% year-on-year, yet the country's retail sales and investment growth showed signs of slowing, reflecting ongoing challenges in stimulating domestic demand. Retail sales, a key indicator of household spending, rose by only 2.3%, missing the forecasted 3.8% and marking the fourth consecutive month of deceleration. The property sector continues to be a significant drag on the economy, with investment in real estate falling by 9.8% in the first four months of the year. This has impacted overall fixed asset investment growth, which stood at 4.2%, although investment excluding real estate saw a healthier increase of 8.9%, largely driven by infrastructure and manufacturing spending. The job market remains a concern, particularly for young Chinese, despite the overall jobless rate stabilizing at 5.2%. Amidst these economic strains, the Chinese government has introduced ultra-long-term special treasury bonds to fund key projects, and further housing policy measures are anticipated. The National Bureau of Statistics acknowledged the economy's smooth operation but warned of significant external challenges, highlighting the complexity and uncertainty of the global environment. This economic backdrop has fueled tensions with the US and Europe, who accuse China of exacerbating global market imbalances with cheap exports, a claim China denies. Yahoo US, China's economic recovery is proving to be uneven, with a significant disparity between industrial output and consumer spending. While factory activity surged with a 6.7% increase in industrial output in April, surpassing analysts' expectations, retail sales growth has lagged, rising only 2.3% from the previous year and falling short of the forecasted 3.8%. The property market remains a significant drag on the economy with new home prices falling at the fastest pace in over nine years, despite Beijing's efforts to stabilize the sector, which is crucial given its substantial contribution to China's GDP. The government is attempting to pivot the economy towards emerging industries like electric vehicles and solar cells, and has introduced measures such as the sale of ultralong special sovereign bonds to boost infrastructure spending. However, the ongoing property crisis, marked by a 9.8% decline in property investment over the first four months of the year, underscores the challenges ahead. Nikkei Asia, in Hong Kong, the High Court adjourned the first hearing of a wind-up petition against the beleaguered Chinese developer Country Garden Holdings, setting a new court date for June 11. The adjournment came amid rising hopes for policy support from China's central government, which buoyed the share prices of other distressed mainland property developers. Country Garden, a major player in China's heavily indebted property sector, has been grappling with severe financial strain, narrowly avoiding defaults on its onshore bond interest payments. The company's sales have plummeted, with contracted sales for April down 83% year-on-year, exacerbating its liquidity crisis. Amidst these challenges, Country Garden has appointed KPMG Advisory, China, for its offshore liability restructuring.
The broader property sector continues to face turmoil, with other developers like Shermao Group Holdings and Dashin China Holdings also facing wind-up petitions, highlighting the pervasive financial distress within the industry. And thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 do brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 do brief via email.